So first of all, I want to say thank you for having us, Doc. A lot of people, you know, uh, kind of take it for granted, but someone's time is always valuable. So right here, after hours, putting aside time to to allow us to come into the shop, and go behind the scenes, not just literally as in in the shop behind closed doors, but in your mind, Doc, right here in your head, because you know that's what I'm all about, right? So. Thank you for having us in society. We're here with Oscar and his Liberty Walk S30. So, you know how it is. Obviously, people wanna see about the car. We're gonna talk about the car. But before we get into it, right? How did you get into Nissans and Zs and why society? Honestly, it all started with me just wanting to be a little bit different from the usual. I started with some Hondas, and when I started with the Hondas, it was just kind of me because my friends had Hondas, so it was more of a, I'm trying to kind of go with the flow with what my friends driving at that moment. Okay. Back when I was in high school, so it was just kind of like an easy trade-on. But my actual first car I had started with was a Jeep. A Nissan wasn't something that I had in mind and since my first car. I actually had a Jeep, then I had a, a Honda Civic, and after that Honda Civic, that's when I decided I wanted to have something a little more different unique yeah and honestly i've seen other nissans and none of them really caught my attention until i want something a little more older more classic okay and that's when i came across this 75 280z i actually came across it on craigslist yeah um i went with pretty much all the random cars i just chose any car i didn't even try to put any i didn't put nissan i know i didn't put dots in i didn't put any of that just you mean when you were searching when i was searching the car yeah it would just so what did you what did you type into the search? Yeah, they just put cars. And this is what came up? It's basically, it was a stock 280Z. It was the last car from that page. And from there on, I just went to go check it out because I saw how close it was. Yeah. One thing led to the other. I saw it the next day. I noticed it was from original owner. It's, it had the louvers on there, paint match. It had really neat touches, but it looked really, really clean. So um, you got it from the original owner from 75? Yeah, so it was his dad's car, so he was the second owner technically. But yeah, and what me. year was this that you got it? Uh, I got I got this one back in 2014. I had like 90K miles from what I remember. Okay, so your friends had Hondas, you had a Jeep and a Civic, and you just were like, you know what, I want to do something different, and the Z is what caught your eye. So how did it go from, I want to do something different, to I'm going to create a shop? I was already working in the wheel industry, uh, which is already in the automotive. From that point, I already was kind of seeing what the people were bringing out to the table. I was really influenced by the Euro scene at that point. Like what kind of Euros? Uh, mainly like Volkswagen, uh, Audis, BMWs, that was kind of like the main thing just because I was already in the wheel industry. So those guys are the ones doing those aggressive, crazy setups Okay. for the most part. So I was really uh, working with them a lot. I noticed in that industry, uh, coming to all these events and all those car shows that we would attend, that there was a little bit, there was something missing in the car community that I, I kind of felt like was able to kind of help connect. And that was basically when I had the Z being around those community and all the car communities around there, um, all the shows, I kind of felt like everybody has all these car teams and all this stuff. Yeah. But nobody really has a good history background with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of good history behind it. And yeah. I feel like this car, once I actually realized and I did my research on it, once I picked it up, because I really didn't know what I was getting myself into at that point. I was just, I just liked it for the car. Sure. Honest, was you know? it just the shape? It was all of everything about it. It was like, it was a coupe. It was, it was classic. It was old school. It, like, it just, it looked so cool. And then like, it had like such a cool JDM vibe to it. Uh, I had on it. It was just light blue metallic. So it was like, I don't know, I just saw so much potential in it. And yeah. like I said, I just felt like there was something missing within everything I was involved with in the car community. And I just felt like the Z chassis was just, it had so much history behind it. So when you say missing, what do you feel like was missing? Like a connection? Yeah, a connection between connecting the community worldwide, basically. I feel like within the Z chassis, a lot of Z owners tend to also like other Zs, whether it's be the older ones or the newer ones. You're right, they like the lineage. They still like the whole, they just love the Z chassis in general. Yeah, yeah. The whole lineup from the oldest to newest, somehow everybody just kind of gets sunk in. And it's just that simple. I mean, you wanted to put people together, so the society of Z enthusiasts. The society and of Zs basically came out of that. Society. So I was wanting to make it really simple. I was like, you know what, this is about the community. I want to make something about the community, kind of help inspire others, get them some ideas. At the same time, get them exposure with social media. Nowadays, it's just such a big impact. Okay. So I felt like connecting, how to do something to connect this community together from the oldest to the newest Zs. And yeah. To me, like the Z lineup just felt right. And you know, I already had the car and me having the oldest one. Yeah. I just felt like I had the perfect chance 
podcast, it just started with one thing to the other. I just started meeting up with the Z owners and I just started linking up with people from all outside the country. Yeah. And it just made sense that these people needed uh, someone to kind of just connect them all together. And I just felt like I, a little vision that I've, yeah. you know, I could really help now how make that happen, whether it's uh, with the help of social media. I felt like someone had to put these cars on the maps and I didn't see why not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you got it. Society. When did you officially like brand the name and make so, it? I picked up at 14 in the summer and then like three months later started clicking in my head. So you the so, website, yeah. the, the, the the design, like all of that was in your head? Yeah, I got so I got it early uh basically early 2014 and it was I already had something in mind that I've been wanting to do, but just this was just just came in perfect timing where it all made sense and by summer I already had society created. One thing led to the other, meeting up with people, just connecting them and- Blew up overnight? It blew up overnight, it just yeah. felt like, just because there was just so much meaning to the, to the Z community. On top of that, they had like not much love out there at that time. So I remember me linking up with Sung back in like 2015 when he really stayed with that uh, Fubu Z setup at Greddy, so I know how he got back to that. And then after that, these cars just really got on the map. It was just really cool because, you know, I got to kind of see these cars become from like, someone that really such a wanted car to like a really yeah well the, the following was very niche and then it ended up going mainstream is what you're saying right real quick yeah yeah so did you already know that you wanted to do liberty walk kid um honestly no it was just this this was i didn't even plan on going wide body to be honest it was just a real quick one thing led to the other i was in swatch swap out uh my engine just real quick, just because I had gotten a raw knock back in the day. Oh, okay. Um, just, I was bringing so much oil on this, and basically from that engine, go turbo with the setup. Mm -hmm. Change it up a little bit, have a little more horsepower. And then from there, that downtime, the Liberty Walk situation came up, and I just, something that I just had to jump on. The only one here in the USA with it. Everything from the aero yeah. to the turbo setup, it was sort of Suspension. quick decisions, impulsive, and you just went with it. Yeah, it was just, it just, I was so much downtime, I already knew what I was getting myself into. And for me, I just started seeing the bigger picture. I was like, you know what? I could actually just try to be the guinea pig right now because this car is just needs so much attention to so much love and using today's technology to really help a lot of the community out. Yeah. Um, into helping them get their own S30 up sure. and running, you know? That's also running a similar setup or the same setup. Like leading the way, leading the, you know, In some kind of way, just kind of just to help update the information just because when I try to get information on the setup you couldn't it was, find it. It was just online. It was stuff from the 70s, 80s and 90s. It was just so, so outdated for me. One of the things that I'm getting the most is is that you really you felt like you wanted to help the community. Yeah that was my main and thing. like consolidate and get everything more accessible. So a little bit of suspension went with full techno toy front to back for the most part. I did with the uh, front. On the front, the only thing I did do was the Apex cross member. So they make a cool cross member that adapts to the L series. They also have adapters for like the RB and the JZ as well for this chassis, just because everyone kind of swaps a lot of different engines on this. But for suspension, I pretty much take the Techno Toy with the control arms and rear. I also did what would do a rear caliper kit. It's kind of a little different for this car. The little come ups that I decided to go with. Yeah. Um, in the front with the Wildwood too as well. And for the most part, back in 14, I had gone with the coilovers when I bought the car and it was cool and all, I loved it. It was nice, pretty low for the most part. I almost took my tire, but you just can't really get too far with these cars, especially in California, just because of the frame rails, since they sit lower than the car. Yeah. So for the most part, I would kind of get stuck a lot of places. I would have to get people to come and, you know what I mean? Push, um, and push me out and stuff, it was kind of annoying. So that lasted a few months. So one thing to the other, I was already with these Euro guys at that moment you know what I mean? Those guys were dominating the game on the air setup, so I decided to kind of work with them. At that time, 14, and I was like, you know what, maybe just go on air suspension for GCCS. Okay. That's kind of my game plan, you know, like, you know, looked online, there wasn't really anybody at all that had uh, air suspension that besides uh, one of our, my friends from Japan, Kasuaki, and one of my friends from Belgium, Kamikaze Garage. Uh, they kind of had made their own little custom air setup, but they didn't have much info. They kind of just made it work what they had. So I did the same thing with these Euro guys. Ended up doing a little custom air setup. One switch for the two fronts, one switch for the two rears, a little old school. Let's peep the way you did it in the back, bro. So ever since then though, then I decided to go with the uh, airlift finally, cause I knew that was the move since the beginning. Just kind of wasn't an option back in the day. So I'm kind of putting a little backup battery right there. That way I can still have a battery to basically be able to run my hash light. Uh, 
and a little set of them, a little extra sauce that I'm adding to the tail light, I mean to the dark setup. So that little mega light should hold it down for that, for the backup. But that's kind of what I've been gotten to since then. So before it was a little bit more simpler, but pretty happy with it with, with how it is right now. Still trying to perfect like the air setup for this car just because there's a lot of stuff that goes on to this car just to even get it on air, just the uh -huh. whole sectioning part. Yeah. The whole uh, aspect of that happened to get the, uh, the struts and then have to section the spindle. Um, section in and mess the whole spinning situation, so. So you're just working out the kinks? Yeah, work out the kinks, make it a little as easy as possible using, you know, the best stuff that's kind of out there right now to make it as less complicated for uh, anybody to be able to enjoy air ride suspension. Well, so. there it is, Dad. So I want the little uh, Recaro confetti splash. Combo inside, simple, nice with the black. One of the major upgrades since I had the car was restoring the dash just because I know I look at it every time I get in the car. And for the most part, 99% of the Z's that I've seen have a cracked dash. Um, I know it's really, really difficult to try to restore that. Um, and I know most people end up using a dash cap, but I kind of just ran the cracked dash just until I was able to actually fully restore it just because I wanted to have a nice clean dash without the cutout look. So. Waited my time and I actually ended up working with just dashes back in Van Nuys and they restored my dash. Honestly, made me the happiest guy just because <laughs> I look at it every time and it does to me that's like, yeah, absolutely. Cool, you know, such a, the biggest view inside. Like it's just literally a dash and some seats for the most part for the interior wise. So it's something that I was really uh, happy uh, about restoring. Other than that, we went the roll cage that we had made right before SEMA. This partner Henry, we decided to make it last minute. Mm -hmm. I could wake up SEMA just because it seemed a little basic and honestly he was just like doing the hatch I mean um, the roll cage idea literally on Monday while well, we had to go to SEMA on Friday and I see so we busted two all-nighters and we made it happen got this cage on there last minute I'm just super happy about it too as well just because I know a lot of people when they have this car they have it mounted to the wheel well but we ended up mounting to the bottom behind the seat and is this now an item that's order they can people can order it for the most part i've been kind of just testing it out um r and and getting you know some hours and then flexing it taking it making sure it's a good product it's yeah. really solid before i you know what i mean being offering out there and just getting out there real quick and for the most part i love it everything's perfect on it haven't had any issues with it so i know but that's is that the be, plan that's the once plan you feel really like safe. it is secure and safe and solid yeah. it'll be available that'll be available for sure just want to be a little bit another cool option um, besides the usual what's out there and make sure it's a nice it's a good solid setup secure setup that you're gonna be safe with. yeah you yeah. would enjoy your harnesses and everything in between oscar it's not really cool on there I like it that's a little cool add on and went with the little jdm yellow just happened last minute it just worked out now this little yellow yellow wasn't even part of the theme it just happened it just happened it just happened i was just like what are you doing i was like just yellow well there it is well so happy about it okay oscar man look once again man i always say thank you to people for their time we're here at the shop, but um, before we go, who are the people that you think really deserve to be mentioned and thanked to help you get to where you are? Honestly, I gotta thank all my boys, Henry, Scrubby, Matt, all the boys out at the shop, always helping me out. The suspension, the interior, L28 Turbo, um, there's all these different aspects to it, and we've heard it earlier. Let's get in and go for a ride, bro. Let's go for a ride, bro. Let's I wanna see. show you what it's all about. Hey, let's do it.